So um, I'm just getting it started here. So thank you, lovely people, uh, for coming to my class. This is my very first time ever teaching a class. So I'm always open and open to new ideas or whatever is comfortable for you guys. Um, I'm going to do my own personal introduction. So uh, I'm going to boast you it and think it, and I'm going to do it in English. So. Ashen Gunil Chish, Anyat Kosani, Klinget Rain, Oksan Kata, Yuhet de Wisak, Yak Nahatsati, Shukancha Ayahat, Kagwan Tanchkan Ayahat, Kamechi Kitan in Spanish, Tashkan Ayahat, Kayish Kahit Dach, Shikakwan Ayahat, Gunil Chish, How Ah, Doisum Koyana. So, uh, my English name is Pamela Johnson. Um, I, my namesake is Mary. Uh, Sarah James, Jane Jet Naiu. Uh, my king name is Sun Kata. I am a rape of the Raven Moiety. Um, my my clan is Raven Coal. If I said that, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm a child and grandchild of the Kogwan Tang, and I am also a child and grandchild of the Comanche, the Kichana in Spanish through my mother. Um, my clan house is the Kaish Kahit, which is the platform house, and our mother Koho clan house, which is based out of Sitka, which is where I'm at right now. So um, another thing, I would like to thank the friends of the Sheldon Jackson Museum and the National Endorsement of the Arts for hosting hosting this class and you know helping have artists come in and stuff like that. So thank you guys very much. Um, is there anybody else that would like to do like a quick introduction or no? What about you, Miss Mary? Um, yeah, Sun Jen um, is my Flingat name. Um, I'm from the Star House, uh, Kogwantan, and my Flingat. Let's see, I am. Grandchild of the Dachdenton, and I am child of the Yuk. And my English name is Mary. Okay. Good cheese. Thank you. Would anybody else like to go? Quick introduction. Oh, okay. I will. Uh, I'm just Chris Hoffman, mm -hmm. German. <laughs> and, uh, but since you guys are doing your clinket names, I'll do my Aleut name, which is Amagan Iwaga, which was given to me by um, Harry Bradley. And it means flower woman, because I'm a gardener, I used to be a gardener. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm a wife of Robert. And uh, yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm glad to be here. And Robert told me it was your grandmother that made his vest. And I thought that was really cool. <laughs> yes, so, I yeah. uh, my great grandmother is Ann Keener. Um, she's one of the ladies that inspired me to do work, to do some artwork. Uh, she actually made yes, she did make your uh, partner's best. She made a lot of phenomenally beautiful artwork, as well as um, my cousin Elman, the late Elman de Johnson. She was a phenomenal beater. Just they, these ladies make it look so easy and it's like very tedious and complicated. So yes, I appreciate, I appreciate Robert for bringing that in. I almost got choked up for a little bit. Thank you, Chris. Is there anybody else that would like to say a quick hi introduction? Uh, hello, Jean. It looks, it says Jean's phone is connecting to audio. Awesome. Let's see. Are you having any luck, Jean? Okay. Hello, Ms. Jean. Let's 
Well, uh, thank you. I'm so glad I'm able to do my first Zoom meeting with you guys. This is my very first time ever. So you guys are being so gentle. Thank you. I appreciate that because it's kind of a uh, tedious. So um, does anybody else want to like quickly do a quick introduction or? If not, that's okay. Um, you can also like, you know, raise your hand or whatever to, to let me know if you guys wanna uh, say, have any questions or comments. Um, so as you know, I provided the kits. So let me give you kind of a quick glimpse of what we're gonna be doing, what is in your kits. Uh, and I did mention that we will be, um, I will be giving the abalone buttons. I totally forgot to get the little like Ziploc bags. Uh, so if you, if my wonderful, amazing students would be so kind as to like stop by tomorrow, if it's not too much to come on by and I'll have your buttons ready for you. So keep that in mind, ladies. So this is what we're gonna do. So as you can see, we have this material, right? It's already pre-cut. It comes with a lining already. I don't know if you can see that. This is gonna be interesting. Is that too much light? We don't know. So can, I, can everybody see that kind of? So this is like a lining. It's just a very simple lining. And then, um, like I said, the piece is already pre-cut. And then, uh, we have two, I provided uh, some design work. So we have these very basic. So here's a raven design that comes with your kit. And then here's an eagle design. I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, that comes with your kit, as well as like these just very little basic seaweed designs that will go in the front. Um, uh, and again, I just want to emphasize that if you guys have your own clan crest, you guys are more than welcome to use that. Um, this is again, a, a child's best. So if it's for your grandchild, what, you know, daughter, anybody, you know, it's, uh, that's totally fine. If you have your own clan crest, you're more than welcome to use that. That's a-okay. So you'll also see that we, I had some fusible stuff for your designs. So um, that's gonna be in there. That's for your designs. And then we have this wonderful red material that is gonna be for your designs. So you'll trace your designs, you'll applique it to here, and then we're gonna cut it out. And then I do have some abalone buttons, obviously. So we just have these little like dime size abalone buttons. And then I obviously there's gonna be a big, big one for the eyeballs, for the eyeball, whatever you guys choose. Um, if you guys need more um, like big ones for, uh, whatever design you guys may be using, that's totally fine too. You can just, um, I'm here at the Sheldon Jackson and the doors open at noon. So don't be scared to, you know, kind of stop on by. I understand it's a pandemic and we practice social distancing here and I'm, you know, obviously have a mask. Um, so we are, we are being very cautious here as well. Um, so we, a few of the things that you will need that I couldn't provide would obviously be like a sewing machine. Um, and then, you know, some, I also provided the thread, sorry, and the button thread in there. So um, in case you're kind of wondering, like, why do I have these, why do I have this um, extra thread in here? This is button thread. So this, you know, for your buttons, because sometimes if you use just the regular stuff, I find that it kind of falls out and 
you don't want to do that. <laughs> so button thread and regular thread. Also, um, cheese and crackers. What was I going to say? Do you ladies have any questions? Well, um, do you have any questions, comments, concerns? No, we're good. Okay, we're good. And yeah, so also it would be helpful to have some pins so you can tack stuff down. Um, and there is bias tape in the kits. So you don't have to use the bias tape. You are more than welcome not to, like if you prefer to just kind of have it uh, folded inside out. Do you guys know what I'm talking about where it basically is sewn together, but without the bias tape. Uh, you guys are more welcome to do that. It's completely up to you. This is your your beautiful masterpiece, and I don't want to sit here and say what's wrong or right. That's just not how I roll. So uh, we will be meeting from 1.30 to 3.30. And, you know, if you guys have any you know, questions, like I said, feel free to just, if I'm talking too much, just, you know, bring, you know, do the most you can, you know, give a ring or whatever, raise your hand. Um, and we'll take this, today's kind of like the introduction day, so no worries at all. And any questions? Nope, no questions? Okay, cool beans. Also, it really does help to have some like scrap material because if you're going to be like bobbing your you know threading your bobbin and putting that in sometimes it can be kind of tedious i have that problem myself so you know it's always nice to have if you have scrap fabric um to kind of use it kind of test your sewing machine out just to make sure you know everything is kind of easy easy peasy so it kind of looks like this so it's not so difficult and I can show you guys like what I'm working on right now, if you guys would like, are you guys okay with that? Okay. All right, cool beans. So <laughs> let me get my bag of tricks here. So I like what got me into making children's regalia specifically. Um, I have four girls. So I have four daughters and I found that if they're at a payoff party, we have berries and kids are kids. They're going to be messy. Um, I figured make something that is culturally appropriate, like vest wise, but also make it kid friendly and durable because you're going to put all this time and effort into it and then you just if you make it like out of wool or felt and I'm not knocking anybody who does that more power to you I just you know I'm going to do all this time and energy into it I kind of want to have it last a little bit longer so what I'm currently working on is for my daughter so as you can see and I have her lighting cut out I just haven't sewn it in yet but this is kind of a glimpse and these, I have to say, are the bee's knees. If you can see, these are like little clips. You can get them on Amazon for like five or 10 bucks. They are amazing, especially working with bias tape. The bee's knees, totally recommend. So this is kind of like an outline of what your vest is gonna look like. So you can see that I have a particular crest on mine, because like I said, we're Shogun Shahs, we're co-hosts. So you'll see that we have the Raven and then we have her two little uh, co-hosts kind of sticking out there. And like I said, so I put enough bias tape where it should cover right here, the armholes, and then it'll cover all around. And then you will find that there will be about a hundred buttons that you can put on the front. Well, 101, if you wanna 
add the eyeball in there. I haven't added the eyeball in there yet. So this is kind of what it's going to look like. Granted, I mean, I did flowers on my daughter. She picked it out. So um, you'll see that we have these wonderful flowers. So this is how it's going to look, or it should look, the outside. And of course, there's the lining, which is um, going to be the same thing. Just the reason we have a lining is to, so if I'm stitching, uh, you won't see my stitch work. It'll be covered. So, and it kind of gives it that more of a crisp, clean look. And then some payoff parties that I've seen, you see that these, um, the clan that is hosting it will sometimes have their vest inside out, show, show that they're in mourning. So, um, sometimes people have really fun vest liners. And um, so it just kind of makes it, personalizes their vest, especially my kids, because my daughter's obsessed with Toy Story, so why we put a fun lining in there. Any questions, comments, concerns? Let's see. Oh, I have six chats. Oh, cheese and crackers. <sighs> so wonderful. I'm sorry, I'm trying to like read these and I just want to make sure that they're, you know, I'm getting everybody. Yeah, the wonder clips are the bee's knees. Had I known about this when I first started sewing, curl would have been like not so stressful. Thank God for wonder clips. So um, I will get to show like, you know, uh, how there's different ways to do vests. Um, I got one in flash steel from Amazon. Oh, I love those flash deals. Those are amazing. I go, I love Amazon. I love it. I hate it because sometimes when you order things, I ordered even more abalone buttons. I always find that when you're working with material, you want to have a little bit more than to have a little bit less. And you're like, oh my God, I don't have enough abalone buttons for everybody. <sighs> don't come bringing that. And I ordered some more from Amazon and it was supposed to be here before I came here to Sitka. It was not, it was not terrible. So I'm gonna grab a real piece of artwork over here. Just one second. Okay. And I'm back. So this is Robert Hoffman's uh, vest. And as you can see, there's this killer will on here, right? It's like beautifully amazing, awesome killer will. Actually, my grandmother beaded this, my great grandma Ann Keener. Phenomenal beater. I don't know how she did it, but she used the bee's knees. So look at that. Beautiful flowers. You don't really see flowers like that popping out nowadays. How amaze balls is that? Absolutely amazing. So there's different, you know, there's obviously adult vests. Like I said, I kind of prefer mine to be children friendly and kid friendly because like I said, I have four girls. Uh, anybody else have any questions or comments, concerns, share anything? Oh, okay. So I had one question from the peanut gallery. Um, so I currently reside in Anchorage. That's where I'm living at right now. Um, and how did I learn to sew? So um, I was in high school. I am uh, graduated from Pacific High School here in Sitka. And part of my Alaska Native studies was I had to make, a, you know, Alaska Native artifact. Okay, well, I'm clink it, so I'll make a robe. I made one for my dad. Now, I had one month to crank this puppy out. It's very ambitious, super ambitious. Why? Because um, my, grand, my Auntie Carol, God rest her soul, uh, she's the one that helped me out because I was like, I don't know what to do, you know, and... She's like, all right, I'll help you. So we measured out my dad. My dad's six foot, very like big person, tall person. 
and she showed me uh, like how to do the borders, how to get the design, how to, you know, um, just everything that you can think of she did because I had absolutely no clue what I was walking into. Now, when it came to the borders part, uh, I did. I think I bit off more than I can chew and there's a lot of sleepless nights and like bloody fingertips, <laughs> calluses, yes. Um, because we hand stitched those borders on. We didn't use the sewing machine, we hand stitched them on. So mind you, I was juggling, you know, high school, I was juggling a full-time job, you know, just life in general and getting ready for college. So that in itself was like, ugh, it was a lot. But um, she taught me how to sew. And then my late cousin, uh, Elmanda Johnson, was a really big uh, inspiration too, because she made all of these beautiful robes and all this amazing beadwork that she put on there. And even just for her kids, it was like, I want one, but I wasn't unfortunate enough to be your kid. So she just, these amazing artists just made it look so easy. And I thought to myself, when I was making this robe for my dad, for example, um, I found that I put in a lot of love and effort and just like positive energy as much as I could. Uh, for my dad, you know, he worked hard. He, I'm his last kid, so I'm graduating high school. This is it. He's kind of done in that sense. And so I found that, you know, hand stitching and it was, for me, it was very peaceful. It brought a lot of like calmness to my life. I actually looked forward to doing that after I got like all of my pre-adulting stuff done. I really looked forward to it. So that's kind of what got me into sewing. And then my second robe that I've ever made was for my best friend, Beth. And that was a really big killer well. <sighs> so big. She wasn't as tall, but the design in itself was very big. Again, hand stitched, crazy. But it was also very peaceful. It was, you know, it gives you kind of a sense of who you are and it gives that balance because both of them are eagles. They're both, um, my best friend Beth, she's a killer well, and my dad, he's called one John. So it gave me that I'm the opposite. So I made these gifts out of love and respect and the reciprocal relationship we all have with each other. So that is what got me into sewing and beading. Not to mention my grandma, she's a rock star. Not to be big headed, but she also inspired me too because we have a lot of family pieces that she did. And so, yeah, she's got like suitcases and suitcases full. Is there any other questions, comments, concerns? Anybody? Mm, no, no, nobody's on the chat. Is there any questions you guys have for me? Personally, anybody? Just wondering about uh, how old are your four kids? <laughs> how old are my four babies? Well, my oldest, yeah. she's right here. She's actually posing. I'll take her picture oh. off. She's um, she's ten. She's ten old, and. So this is my oldest baby. She's very bougie. So this is actually her robe that I made her not too long ago. And look how small it is. She's like, I need a new robe. And I'm like, the saga continues. <laughs> so I have, uh, a f I have four girls. They are 10, eight, three, and three and a half, almost four months old. And Fun fact about my minions, my three older ones are born on the exact same date. They're just different years. So they're all May 8th. We have a May 8th, 2010. We have a May 8th, 2012. And we have a May 8th, 2017. Then we have June 18th. My last one is the oddball. So um, do I teach my girls to sew? Yes, I do. I teach my oldest um 
everything that I've learned from like various artists. So another another uh, artist that I really love all of her work uh, is Marie Guthrie. She's of Sitka here. She's a Kaguantan. I just love her beadwork. She just, it's so beautiful. Um, she made me a pair of ear loops I don't have with me, um, but we use those for like our ukuahungis, our spirit songs. So I'm pretty sure when you guys have lived here, you guys know the ear loops, they hang down their yarn. And when you do spirit songs or ukuahungis, you have those and they kind of sway like this. She made me a pair, love them. And um, so she's one of them that also was like, wow, I want to be like that. She just makes it look easy. These women can like sew with their eyes shut and I'm like, what? I want to get there. Again, I'm at the larvae stage. So I'm like pupa, like very, very starting. But um, I do teach my girls to sew. All right, now I'm teaching my 10 year old. Um, we're going to work on her robe together. She's coming up with her design and that's, she's going to help me like draw it out and things like that so I do teach my girls to sew not my three-year-old once they hit like 15 16 they're they're doing their own because I do a lot of bead work for them as well so it is a lot but they're four girls they can help me so we'll get there <laughs> we'll put them to work is there any other questions comments concerns Anything? Nope. Uh, do you, is there any kind of sewing that you want to learn? Um, or art forms you want to learn otherwise? I do want to learn, um, I do want to learn how to do Raven's Tail or Chill Cat. Um, that is one of my biggest, like, I would love to be able to just do a robe. Mind you, this is for like myself. <laughs> Eventually I would, if I got into Raven's Tell or Chill Cat, of course I'd make something for my girls. Um, also jewelry making, uh, I, like I'm sure everybody, you know, here knows the Galanins, like Nick and Jared Galanin. I love those guys. Not even gonna lie, I love their artwork. Humble human beings. Um, also, there's Dosh Ginny, Mary, and Ross Valetti of Juno who do jewelry. I like I've met a lot of jewelry people, and I really would like to learn how to do jewelry. Um, I'm kind of a jewelry junkie. I'm not even gonna lie. So this one right here, I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Um, so this is from TJ, our Crystal, and Joe Young of Heidelberg. So you can see that there's an eagle. And then there's uh, four cohos. Um, I don't know if you can see this is like terrible lighting. Oh, I really don't like this camera. Um, but there's four cohos. And then I think this was made by Sue Valetti. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not. But there's a it's a raven coho. And it's got three cohos on there. So there's one right there, um, one right there, and one right there. And um, there's Benjamin Schleifton, who does phenomenal jewelry, the Youngs from Heidelberg. Um, I'm also kind of an earring junkie, so I like to learn how to make earrings. So these are done um, by a young man in Juno, but he's from Yaktat. Gosh, what is his name? Oh, forgot his name. But there are other phenomenally amazing ladies who do earring work. There's Nay Brown. She's from Yaktat. I don't know what's in Yaktat, but like all these amazing earring makers come from there. I don't know. There's quite a few ladies that go to Yaktat for like earrings. Um, Mako Montour. I have a lot of her earrings. Um, these are, I think these are like, I think he has a business name, it's like Dry Bay. 
designs, I think. So like uh, jewelry making, earring making, and chill cat and raven's tail would be my three things I want to learn. Yes, they are Chester's. Mary, yes, you know. God, he is amazing. I saw these and I was like, I got to have them. So I got a hold of them and I was like, Chester, I love these. Um, also, they're lightning stripes. You know, as you can see, they're lightning. And my mom's people, because she was adopted into the Raven Coho, because my dad, obviously from Southeast here, my mom is from the lower 48s. So she's Comanche. And you will see on a lot of Comanche artwork that we do lightning patterns. And that's apparently where my fan, what I was told was our fan, my mom's side of the family descends from um, is uh, we use the lightning as our crest or our design work. So a lot of our, um, ribbon skirts or our shawls, you'll see that we'll have lightning patterns and on our horses, we'll put these on there. So, yes, those are Hans, Hans Chester. Yes, he's amazing. I love him. Like I said, I don't know what's in Yakutat, but they have some pretty awesome earring makers. They do love them. And oh, carving. I would like to carve. I know there was um, a young lady, was it Jennifer Bradley? One of the lovely Bradley ladies. Brady. Brady, Jennifer Brady, Brady. Yes. sorry, Brady. Yes, Brady. Um, I don't, I feel like we can use a lot more females in the carving industry. Um, I know that there was Again, a young up and coming rock star. Um, she her her business name was like Caffeinated Raven. Um, again, she's from Yakutat. She apprenticed under David Boxley, um, who's carving. But I do believe we need like more female carvers and jewelry makers. Just because females are awesome. Not to say that men aren't. I just yeah. We need female empowerment in those, in my opinion. Is there any other questions? Any other questions, comments, concerns? Allison Brimner, gosh, yes. No, it's Brimner, Brimner, yes, Brimner. She is amazing. She's, yeah, my daughter like idolizes her. It's really cool. Other cultures you're inspired by? Well, um, I'm definitely inspired by like um, my mom's culture. I don't know much about them because I've mainly predominantly grown up here in Alaska. Um, however, I'm, I helped my mom make like a ribbon skirt. This is my first time ever making a ribbon skirt in my life and it did turn out pretty amazing. So trying to gather like information like that from my mom's side, it's something that I really want to do. Um, I think all cultures from like different parts of the world are really amazing. And it's super um, beautiful in the sense like we have the Hawaiians and you know, the Polynesian culture, super amazing, very beautiful people. And then, you know, we have are, I like to say relatives, you know, because when you're first, first nations people, I mean, if you think about it, we just kind of scattered everywhere and, you know, made our own, made our own tribes and stuff. So um, I'm definitely inspired by the, uh, where's my mom from? My mom is from Oklahoma, is where she's from. So my mom's side of the family is from California, Oklahoma, and Kansas. That's where my mom's from. We went to her reservation once and everybody just looked at me like I was crazy because they were like, oh, you're from Alaska too? Are you Eskimo? And I'm like, no, no. We don't ride polar bears. We are civilized human beings. 
I'm from Southeast. There's actually water there, moisture. And I have to say, as in perks of being home, my hair is not like crazy, like, like this, like a lion's mane, which is why I have it down. <laughs> But uh, I really like the uh, the uh, what is it the Diné people. Uh, actually, some of our Shinget language and the Diné people have we have a very close, if not similar, dialect. Some things, some of our words are their same words in there. It's really cool. There's a big story about that. Um, Simshians, I love, I love their work too. I also like their music. Their music, their songs are kind of jazzy. I wonder why they're so skinny. Yeah. Any other questions? I'm excited to, to do this stuff with you guys. It's been a long time since I've been around actual adults, even if it is through Zoom. <laughs> so, uh, any other questions? Sorry, I'm like looking at the chat box and listening to you guys at the same time. No? Okay. Well, um, shuckaroos. Uh, does everybody, oh, speaking of which, while we're talking about things that you will need, um, does anybody have like really sharp scissors or I don't know, I don't know how people use exacto knives when you're doing the uh, like doing the inside of your design. So let's just say it's like the eagle. You guys have plenty of scissors and stuff to do our exacto knives. I don't who uses exacto knives? There's some sorcery going on there because I don't use exacto knives <laughs> or sharp scissors to kind of cut these out. Does everybody have what they need in that aspect or? Okay, good. Um, is there any other questions or comments, concerns? Obviously have an iron. Um, I didn't have time to like re-iron everything. So what I would recommend is before class starts tomorrow, just to kind of like lightly iron your material, uh, lightly iron, you know, your, your pieces, just so they're straight like this. So when we start pinning it together and we start, you know, putting it together, it's, it's nice and easy to work with. Nobody likes to work with like crumpled, crumpled, up, crumpled fabric. And then also, um, if you want to re-iron your piece of red material, um, don't, obviously don't iron these two together because if you do, you can't get your design on there. So just um, iron the fabrics, that's it. That's all we're gonna do. So before class tomorrow or when you have time tonight, little, you know, anytime, before, you don't have to, but I would highly recommend um, ironing all of your fabric. So it's easier to work with. It's not, um, won't be wrinkled and trucky looking. So um, also, if you would like, I mean, this is just my personal preference. Everybody's different. Um, I like to use these type of pencils, they're kind of big and they're kind of, you know, a little bulky, but um, I find since this is kind of like a pretty bulky line work right here, and this just comes in better when you're drawing on this material, it just helps and it just glides a little bit more smoothly. So if you want to get like um, these type of pencils, just I don't know if they sell them at Market Center, C Mart, whatever. I have some here. If you guys, again, would like to just swing by and grab one, that's totally fine too. I can give you guys one of these. Uh, then again, it, you don't have to have one of these. It's just 
you know, more than anything, preference. If you guys would, um, if you guys want to. Is there any other questions or comments, concerns? Anything? Okay, so um, tomorrow we will probably just focus on draw, like tracing our designs uh, tomorrow. Now, if you have, a, like I said, if you have a family crest, that's totally fine too. You can easily use that. Um, if you have any questions on like whether you think it will fit or not or whatever, you comments, whatever, if you need us to like, I'll be more than willing to, if you wanna bring in your design, I'll see if I can like shrink it or make it bigger or whatever um, at the Sheldon Jackson in case I do have access to a printer and stuff like that or a scanner. So the doors open at 12. So I'll be here. Uh, yeah. Is there any question? I know I probably sound like a broken record. This is my first time teaching um, different people. Uh, it's very nice. Can you say something about the importance of the price? Oh, good one. Okay. So I don't know if there's not any like non-indigenous people in this class. Um, one, I kind of, I just have to throw it out there. Um, I think it would be important if we, if you're not indigenous to kind of watch how you use these crests. Does that make sense? So, if you are non-native and you sit here and say, oh, well, now I belong to the killer whale people or I belong to the eagle people or raven, whatever, I really kind of want you to watch that unless you've gone through our proper protocols of being adopted into a clan or have permission from that clan. I would really appreciate it if you just wouldn't like cultural appropriate these designs. Um, they do hold significance to us indigenous people um, and as an artist and if you're not native and you're making it for your grandson, if you could just kind of break it down, I don't know, into like kid terms uh, about the, the designs on there. And like I said, you if it's like, you know, you're from Scotland and you have a specific crest you can put on your vest, that's totally fine too. But I just want to really emphasize the, um, try not to misuse these designs, please, especially if you're non-native, because these are part of our identity. This is acknowledging our matriarchal, our mother's people. And so I really kind of want to emphasize that um, and the significance behind um, our regalia, these crests hold a lot of importance and they hold a lot of history. I'm not saying these particular, but because they do represent um, two major moieties within the Shingit culture, let's just try and be appropriate and not um, cultural appropriate them or automatically assume just because I use this on a child's vest that my child's going to be Eagle or Raven. Does that make sense? Um, I don't want to step on any toes, but then again, I also don't want to have um, people not understand the significance of that because this is, uh, for us, this is a cultural, um, part of our cultural identity and we just don't want it tossed around like it's not a big thing. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, well, thank you for being understanding of that. And um, yeah, so I look forward to doing that tomorrow. Um, and like I said, if you guys need any designs that need to be um, 
kind of expand it a little bit more or shrunk down a little bit, um, excuse me, stop by class a little bit later or um, not a little bit later, a little bit before class, uh, then I, I can see what I can do for you guys. Does that make sense? And um, let's just make sure that uh, if you guys can swing by here at 12 or have somebody else pick it up, your guys' abalone buttons. So they, they will be done tonight. Is there any other comments, concerns? Yeah, so we're open Wednesday through Saturday from 12 to 4. So I'm just throwing it out there. And come and check out the exhibit. It's so amazing here. Um, also, if you want to maybe come up with your own design and have just like a little bit of formed line practice, that's totally cool too. Um, you can also come here because there's a lot of inspiration uh, to kind of, come, you know, help create your own design. Um, yeah, that's also a good thing to do too. That's also kind of what I'm doing. I'm kind of like looking at, wow, this is a really awesome form line and wow, you know, let's see if I can tweak this to kind of my own. And so that's, that's kind of a bonus too. And like I said, here at the show in Jackson, we do practice um, COVID-19 protocols and safety precautions. So we do keep, you know, six feet apart and you have to wear a mask and, you know, things like that. It's not that we don't appreciate you guys. And believe me, I wanted to like half five and greet one of my um, students, but I couldn't. Jaina, Jet and I, who's sorry. Should we wash our fabrics um, before we start? You can, if you want to, I'd really recommend like either like a quick hand washing or a uh, gentle cycle uh, if you want. That's, again, that's preference. For me personally, I don't because it's like brand new and if it if it was like bought from like a secondhand store or whatever then i probably would but um like i said it's totally up to you guys um if you want to wash your fabrics before if you do i would really recommend do they shrink much um i don't throw mine in the dryer i throw mine i kind of just let mine air dry is what i do is i let them air dry and they should dry up pretty, dry pretty quickly because instead of risking it with a uh, dryer. So I cannot confirm or deny if they shrink much. I would just give it a like little quick hand wash and dryer on up, hand dry, air dry, air dry, not hand dry. Pause. I have been at caffeine guys. <laughs> Any other questions, comments, concerns? And you, um, and you guys can put uh, beadwork on there if you would like. That's if you have beads. Um, if you like, I can kind of show you how to quickly, like, not quickly, <laughs> but you can bead around it if you want to, um, you don't have to fully beat it, just kind of like beat around it a little bit if you want to. That's totally up to you guys. Um, would you like me to show that or no? Does anybody plan on doing that? You would, would you prefer if I showed you how to like beat around it if you're gonna do bead work? I would like to see that. It might be something different to do. Okay, okay, I will prepare that then. Thank you. Golly, my class is amazing. I'm so excited. I have two kids, so they're each getting one. So all right. I can so maybe yeah. one will have it, one won't. 
Yeah, I did that with my, you know, I kind of, like I said, I leave it up to preference. I believe that we kind of treat kids kind of like little human beings because they're intelligent enough to know what they want, what they don't want. So, for example, um, I made my oldest daughter and my youngest, she's my youngest at the time, uh, vests. And they had the same crest, the same design, but one, their colors were opposite of each other. And they were, um, what, my oldest had mother of pearl buttons and my other one had abalone buttons. Now, I asked my oldest, I said, do you want me to bead your seaweed in the front? She said, no. My other one, I said, do you want me to bead on the front on your seaweeds? She said, yes. So I have a picture. Oh. So if you look closely, you can see I beaded around the whole seaweed design. And you see how we have the, she chose Dora. She was into Dora back in the day. And so, oh, yeah. yeah, this is what your lining is going to look like. And what I meant by like, you don't have to use the bias tape. If you know how to sew, see, if you look closely, there's no bias tape on hers. You can, um, you can do it that way too. I haven't done this one. Uh, like I haven't sewn a vest without bias tape in quite a while. So I'm like, kind of rusty at it um but like i said it's totally up to you it's total preference and look this is one obviously without the uh beading so it's totally up to you guys and i will have it to where um i will be showing you guys how to kind of outline the beads outline it in beads if you want so Unfortunately, I don't have enough, obviously, beads for everybody, but I'll show you what I have on, on mine, because I even cut one, cut one out. It's the same thing as you guys, just so we can all be on the same page. Is there any other questions, comments, concerns? Also, another kind of, like, cautionary thing um i would and i did a big boo-boo on this one just act like this is invisible it's always just important not to be like eating or drinking around your work area because you could have that you you almost cranked it out and depending on the material that you're working on and depending on you know, whatever circumstances may be, if you're working on beadwork and this spills everywhere, there are some materials where if you spill it, um, I'm not saying this material in particular, um, it could just kind of ruin your fabric and then there goes all your work. And it goes for food too. I don't have any food here, I just have water, but. Um, and if you can't help it, just put it off to the far, far away as you can from your artwork is what uh, is important, I feel is important. Another thing too, uh, and this, some people call it superstitious or some people, you know, have their own opinions about it. But if you find that you are getting frustrated with your work, because it's going to happen, I find that when it's really good, it's going to get a little like frazzling. If you find that you are getting frustrated, it is A-OK -okay to say, Pam, I need to step away. I'm getting really frustrated with this. And I'm like, all right, take a break. Because that's usually your artwork telling you, you need a break. Always heed to that warning, because if you don't, it's just, it could just get into a big frazzle ball and then nobody wants to be frazzled or stressed out when they're doing artwork, right? Because it's going to go on a child. Whatever energy you have, it goes into your artwork. So if you're having like just a really poo-poo day and your kids are running wild and they're looking like Lord of the Flies and you're like, ah, take a break. And it's okay to just be like, I need to put this off 
I gotta clean the house and I gotta put the kids to bed, whatever. Come back to it when you're in a calm and happy place. Because this is, you know, whether you like it or not, or whether you see it or not, this is a piece of a too, and it's carries on whatever energy you put in there and it carries on it's you know we've been given a vision and when you have that vision you want to be respectful and you want to be like in a peaceful place when you work on this just my own two cents so i do have those days where it's like you know baby screaming kids are running around like i'm like war of the flies get frustrated take a break this your outward telling you time out and it's okay take a break um don't look at my shameful mouth um is there anything else questions comments uh, yeah i um i don't have kids or grandkids so um so if i make a kid when i'd have to give it to somebody so i'm wondering what about what age size this would be i don't know kids much <laughs> so this would probably fit about like two-year-old one-year-old oh ba so real small like okay two three years old i would say you know there are okay. some two three-year-olds that are like petite i don't know and they okay. eat constantly but they it goes to their big toe we don't know it goes to their attitude we don't know my daughter was really petite. She could, she's just really petite and it went to her attitude. So yeah, I mean, if you want to look, um, it's going to be about this size. Okay. So thank you. Yeah. Is there any other questions or? Comments, concerns. I'm breaking my own rule right now, but it's as far away as I can. Any questions? It's okay, you guys don't have to be shy. I promise I won't bite. Just thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you too. <laughs> So yeah, if you guys um, if you guys want to wash it, that's fine. I would say just, just kind of hand washing it, air dry, iron, iron it out, um, and then I think some of your kits, not all of them, have this little like pin to kind of keep them together. I would, you know, anytime you find that you're not gonna be busy with it or you're we're not in class um, I would suggest kind of keeping everything together in the bag that was provided so you don't lose it or you know it doesn't get any ruined or anything Is do you use a pattern for your bigger sized um, vests I do I do uh, yeah I do I just didn't I think I have like one bigger size and then there I think like two are adult sizes, a couple are adult sizes. Is there any other questions, comments? Should we, oh, thank you so much for having me. Okay, so uh, tomorrow we'll start class at 1.30. Um, and then uh, if you want to mark your calendars for October 17th at 2 p.m., that's my artist talk. Um, the Zoom link will be the same for like all the classes. So I'm just gonna be like presenting real quick. Um, and I, my internet is acting up. 
uh, if you guys would like to just um, maybe toward after when everything is done and put together, if you guys just wouldn't mind kind of like sharing and being like, hey, this is what my child's dress looks like. That would be amazing. Just saying. Sometimes you can draw the best inspiration from other, other fellow artists. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of a good feeling to share artwork. Let's just be mindful of not to like copy anybody's family crest or anything like that, unless you've got permission. Just throwing it out there. Anything else? Mm, anything? Okay. Well, uh, would you guys like to kind of disperse? So today was just kind of like a get to know everybody. If you have any questions? Um, anything like that? Uh, all right, so it looks like, um, can I get a vote on how many of us are ready to hele, which means go, we're ready to bounce on out. We're ready to go. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, ladies. There's no gentleman, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> we'll see you all tomorrow at 1.30. So tomorrow, we're just like I said, we're going to reiterate. We're just going to draw our designs. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you tomorrow. <laughs> see you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Bye.